Great. Right. So, yeah, so thank you very much for uh, inviting me to speak. Um, I've tried doing these Zoom uh, talks in different ways, and uh, I just can't get that slide thing to really work. So I'm going to try to just share my screen and write on here, um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And, and I do know that, there, that there's this Discord chat going on the side, which is great, but I do encourage you to uh, interrupt me. I'm very happy to take many uh, questions. So also, uh, I, I, I guess, I, you know, you're disappearing. Do you know you're, I guess you might, it's hilarious, but you, you appear to be disappearing. You're, you're, uh, oh, it's you're because saying. I'm flipping. Maybe I should stop my video. Let me stop my video uh, because <laughs> I, I'm, I, I put my tablet down so I can write on it. Um, okay. So uh, the title of my talk is determinants and deformation theory of perfect complexes. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Max Lieblick. Um, and it really, uh, it, it may come across as a slightly strange topic uh, because, well, let me start with what got me into this. So uh, let me talk about the motivation, um, which um, is a somewhat technical problem. So let me think about a closed immersion of schemes, x into x prime. Um, so closed immersion, it's a deformation theory problem. And my students have repeatedly and politely told me that my handwriting is not great. So please also ask about that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Um, okay. And then uh, let me suppose it's uh, defined by a square zero ideal. So I have an ideal which I'll call k, k squared is zero. Um, so, um, that means I can view K as an OX module, so, right? So uh, we have two, uh, the topological spaces are the same, um, and we have uh, um, this ideal here. And then I'm interested in a perfect complex, uh, whoops, D of X. So this is a perfect complex, um, complex, on X. Okay, and so perfect here means it's an object in the derived category, so a complex of OX modules, uh, which locally can be represented by a bounded uh, complex of vector bundles, if you like. Okay, uh, so that so the, the key point being that perfect is a local property. Okay, and then we can think about a deformation. Deformation of E to X prime. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean a pair um, E prime sigma, where E prime is an object of D minus X prime. So a complex on X prime and sigma is an isomorphism E prime and for this talk, I'll also always be doing derived tensor product, even if I don't write it. So I take OX. Okay, so that's an isomorphism in the derived category. So that's what I mean by deformation. Okay, and so we, Max and I were interested in understanding some properties of this deformations, in particular the relationship between deformations and the determin the deformations of the determinant of the complex, which I'll talk about uh, later. Um, so here are some facts, uh, which I'll, I'll say more about this uh, later. So facts. Uh, so one um, is that there's an obstruction class, which I'll de denote by um, so omega of e which lives in X2 of the comp, uh, uh, whoops, X2 E, E tensor with the ideal. Oops, my, I'm a little worried about the writing here. Um, so that's an X2. My computer seems to be slowing, so let me, um, okay. So there's a cl class there, which is zero. 
if and only if um, there exists a deformation. Okay. Um, so that's the first point. Um, oops. Okay, so two. So this is already a serious fact. I mean, this this seems not so. So this is an actual thing in the drive category, and yet you're going to, and you're not deforming a complex, uh, or maybe you're de deforming them locally. Like, is that? Yeah. So I'll I'll talk more about this. Um, I mean, this is somehow, as I said, much pretty much everything I say is known in some in various levels of generality and sort of the well. I'll, I'll get to that, but uh, yes, it's not obvious, I think, uh, in, in, in complete generality. Um, so let's see here, whoops. Um, let me erase this here. Um, right, and so, and the second part is, um, if you have a lifting, uh, then uh, if this class is zero, Um, then uh, the set of deformations the set of deformations uh, form a torsor uh, under uh, the x1 Um, that's an E. Um, and third, um, and then here there's some condition if um, X, oh, I'm this, sorry, my stylus is acting up. Let's see, hopefully that goes away. If X minus one of this E is zero, um, then I'll just write it this way. Automorphisms are given by the X zero. Um, I see a lot of activity in the chat, but I can't see it. So uh, if there's something I should pay attention to, please let me know. Um, yeah, we'll definitely let you know. In, in number one, that's a derived tensor, I guess. That's the everything is derived. Everything, yes. everything is derived, right? Tensor. Everything is derived. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, uh, so that's kind of um, um, well. Again, I'll talk. It's not trivial, uh, but it's sort of known in various uh, levels of generality that this is true. And so, uh, Max and I were working on this Fourier Mukai stuff, uh, and one thing that. Uh, we wanted to consider then is if you have this perfect complex, you can also consider its uh, determinant, determinant of E, uh, which is a line bundle. Okay, and uh, so you have this line bundle and you can ask about the deformations of that and uh, sort of, it seems to be a folklore theorem uh, that uh, that should be controlled by uh, this trace map, which um, I'll say more about this, but in general, uh, there's a trace map from X i e e tensor k. Sorry for the handwriting. Uh, that's a K there, uh, down to H I X K. Okay, and so this is defined, let me put a reference. This is in E C. Maybe I'll just write E C and say it in words, complex cotangent, uh, E Lucy's thesis on the cotangent complex. Uh, you can find that there, it's chapter five, 3.73.
Okay, so it's just something about perfect complexes, you have a trace. And so uh, there was this long thing that, uh, well, I'll state the theorem, uh, which is expected, uh, but was sort of left as a gap in the literature. And so, at least in the generality that we wanted it. Okay, and so here's uh, sort of the, so the first point is that the trace, so if you can take the trace of the obstruction class um, and that should be the uh, obstruction class of uh, the determinant. First point. Uh, two, um, so I, I mean, I'm just, I just want to say precisely what I mean by saying that the trace map is compatible with, this, with the deformation theory. So let me at least say uh, two, the, the second part. So if I have a deformation and I have a class alpha in X1, um, next, uh, E, E tensor K, um, then I can do what? I can take the determinant of sort of the thing I get by acting by alpha on the E prime sigma. And then um, um, that's going to give me the trace of alpha, which is uh, lying in the cohomology class, acting on the determinant of um, E prime, and then uh, determinant of sigma. Okay, and there's a similar statement for uh, three. Maybe I won't write it here. Okay, um, so let me put that there. Okay, so that was kind of the thing we needed, uh, and there was this uh, sort of unfortunate situation uh, where uh, sort of everyone expected this to be true. Some people knew how to do it, some people didn't. People started writing papers where they said, let's assume that this is true. Uh, at some point it started going by the name of Lieblich's conjecture, I believe. <laughs> um, and so uh, we really wanted to just kind of settle this, okay? And so uh, let me be clear, I'm not claiming this to be some big revolutionary, uh, you know, grand theorem. And certainly there are people who knew how to do this, uh, but I think the, this, this sort of, at least for me, the path to really writing out a complete proof of this uh, was help, was enlightening. So, um, okay, so maybe I'll say a few words about uh, um, sort of previous work and so on. Uh, but but you really you should take. I mean, for me, to be quite honest, for many years I had been seeking sort of a problem that would let me learn about higher algebraic geometry and sort of derived algebraic geometry. And I, I couldn't get into sort of reading these long books uh, without a problem that really kind of forced me to do it. And, and this was the problem that forced me to do it. So, uh, you know, I want to explain how that came to be. Okay, so, uh, so let me make a few remarks. Um, so first, I want to work on a general site, um, not just in the setting of schemes. Uh, and we'll have some surjective map of rings here. My site will always be called C. Okay, so we sort of a general, in the, really in the setting of maybe Elucy's book on the cotangent complex. Um, okay, and two, uh, there, let me just be, again, make clear well, that, the, yeah. The one thing I've got to ask when you say that is, presumably there's no, is there no harm in us thinking of something more concrete or is there harm because you're going to need to use facts about general, uh, you need to work on more general sites? Um, well, I think, so let me make the next remark, which uh, I think is the relevant distinction uh, of sort of levels of generality, which is um, if you have, uh, so, so let's see, so special cases, um, uh, so maybe one is when you have global resolutions. So if you're in the setting of sort of a projective variety over a field or something, um, then I think you can 
get the obstruction class and also the compatibility with traces and so on. You can get the previous results. There's work of uh, Hoybrecht's um, and uh, Thomas um, that studies this. Uh, and um, I also remarked that I think in that case, you can also deduce it from either C, um, I guess it's chapter five, 3.7.7. Um, if you work a little bit with the filter derived category. So in some sense, the case of global resolutions was already known, uh, or at least could have been known uh, easily from what's sort of in the literature already. So now, okay, so that, so I think that's the relevant distinction is whether you have, you can really represent your complex by an actual complex of vector bundles or not. Uh, and, and so the leap from a general scheme to a ring site, I think from my perspective is not huge. Um, so if you wanna just think about a scheme, that's fine. Does, does that answer your question, Ravi? Um, yeah. Okay, so, so that's uh, that special case. I should also mention that uh, this result was also, I think, um, at least in some form in work of Jörg, I apologize for the pronunciation, Toen uh, Vesozi. Um, oops, there's my stylus acting up. Vesozi, um, in the context of uh, derived algebraic geometry, um, so derived schemes, um, and they have a, a characteristic zero assumption uh, there, which I think is related to sort of whether you work with differential graded algebras or simplicial rings and so on. So, um, okay, so, so a lot is known, but I sort of want to tell my version of the story. And if there are people, you know, there may be people in the audience who know much more derived things than I do. So please, by all means, uh, jump in and correct if I uh, accidentally slight someone or, uh, you know, by not mentioning their work, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, Actually, Martin, a question yeah. that's, that seems worth asking uh, from chat, which is, would you say you have an actual complex of vector bundle in the case where you have an actual complex of vector bundles, then in that case, it's done in that reference. And so you're dealing with a case where there's not an actual, where it's only locally an actual complex? Uh, so in, in the case when you have an actual complex of vector bundles, uh, you can view it as a filtered object uh, where the, su the successive quotients are vector bundles. And so then if you look, I think the easiest approach is if you look in Elucis here, there's a, there's a result about the compatibility of trace with passing to the associated graded of a filtration on a complex. And if you use that result, then you can reduce the case of a complex of vector bundles to the case of a vector bundle, uh, where the result is fairly straightforward. Um, so, I, so does that answer the question? Um, so, so if you look up this reference here, it's a statement about the trace being compatible with the uh, passing to the associated graded when you have work in the filtered derived category. Um, okay, I should also mention uh, work of Gaber. Um, Uh, which is uh, sort of there, he does something more general, which is deformation. Um, theory. All right, boy, this let me try to write that nicer. Deformation theory of uh, bounded complexes without the perfection assumption. Right. I mean, the, it's not clear why one should have this perfection assumption uh, to start. Okay, so um, that was sort of the motivation. Um, and so I want to explain sort of the rough idea of what we do uh, to, to do this. Um, and I think, you know, there's no, not a huge value in me trying to explain 
derived algebraic geometry. So I, let me start by explaining sort of wh why I think it comes in naturally, and then we can talk about as much of the details as we want. Uh, okay. Um, so, so some naive ideas. Naive ideas. Okay, so let's see, here's the setup. So I'm in a site C um, and I have uh, this ideal, square zero ideal inside O prime surjecting onto O. Okay, and I have my perfect complex E. All right, um, so let me just make a very strong sort of, uh, you know, under a very strong as assumption, let's see what happens. So suppose um, that there exists an inclusion uh, from this kernel K into some I uh, such that kills all the cohomology. Meaning that if I take X I Uh, e, E tensor I, that this is zero uh, for I bigger than zero. Okay, so right, so I want to do sort of dimension reduction like you might do for cohomology coherent sheaves, where you um, can sort of lower the dimension by embedding into an injective and, and looking at the co kernel. Okay, so suppose we have this, um, and then I look at what can I do? So I have my ring here, O prime, surge acting onto O, um, and then uh, here's K. I can push out this extension uh, to I. Okay, and then here, uh, let me maybe call this O tilde. Okay, and that's a new uh, sort of thickening of my starting ring O, um, which is, I mean, you just take the direct sum of O prime and I, and then you sort of quotient out by the diagonal K. Okay, and that gives you a new ring. And uh, then that has sort of a further push out, uh, which goes, to, if you push out here to I mod K, um, this push out here will just be the ring of dual numbers on this module I of K, I mod K. Okay, um, and so if I do that, what I get is that X, uh, if you take cohomology here, my assumption that the cohomology vanishes means that if I take this X1 E, e tensor uh, I mod K, that this is in fact uh, X2, I mean, identified with under the boundary map, X2 E, e tensor K. All right, there's a boundary map and I assume that the relevant things are zero. Okay, and so uh, now again, it's not clear I can do this, but uh, let's suppose I choose a lifting, um, let's suppose say lifting, um, E tilde of uh, E uh, to O tilde. Okay, suppose I can do that. What should the obstruction be? Well, the obstruction should be that I then, so that's a tilde here, then I can push it out to a, to a deformation, maybe E bar, which is over, let me write it this way, over O bracket I mod K, All right? So I, I have some object over this thing here, uh, over the O tilde, I can sort of tensor it out to get a lifting over this ring of dual numbers. There I have a distinguished lift, so that gives me a class up in here uh, in that, uh, 
x1, and then I go over here, and that should be my class omega e. All right, so that would be sort of how I would want to define the obstruction, is first sort of think about a push out where I know that there is a lifting, choose the lifting, and then push out further and do these kind of tricks uh, by understanding the ring of dual numbers. Okay, this is not going to work in this uh, exactly this way because it's not true that you can always push out to kill the obstruction. Okay, so uh, the assumption is too strong, but, th but I would like to sort of explore that idea. Okay, so that's the first remark. And the, the second remark is um, sort of a feeling about, you know, it, I mean, if you know some deformation theory and what I said earlier, you always see this kind of thing where you have some cohomology group and, you know, some degree cohomology group captures uh, the obstruction. Then you go one down that captures the isomorphism classes of deformations. And then you go one further down and that captures the uh, automorphisms, right? So there's always, it's, but it's always kind of the same cohomology that appears, right? And so um, I'd like to sort of capture that in a formal way. In the rank one case, uh, this can be understood as follows, which is, and now don't worry if this doesn't make sense, but I think it's, it provides some inspiration for me, which is if you think about sort of the category of line bundles, or maybe uh, the stack of line bundles over the side, uh, invertible modules under O, we're really trying to find a lifting um, sort of to the category of line bundles over O prime, right, in the rank one case. Um, and so we're trying to calculate. Mark, by rank one case, you mean you're just deforming line bundles? or Yeah, that E is a line bundle, E is a line bundle, yeah. Um, and so, uh, Right, so I, I'm sort of calculating the fiber product here. Um, and um, then you get maybe some, let me call it GE. Um, and that GE, if you form that fiber product, that's a gerb uh, banded by K. And so the obstruction is the class of that gerb. Um, but actually you can say this in a way that's sort of related to Picard categories, again, Feel free to ignore this if, it, if it's not familiar, but really what I should be thinking about, oh, that came very slow, all right. Um, if you think about O star mapping as a complex to zero, I'll put sort of, this will look sort of silly, but um, o, o prime star. So this complex here, for example, this is sort of the two term complex that corresponds to this Picard category. If you, there's a correspondence between two term complexes of abelian groups and um, Picard categories, this is an SGA. And so um, what we're really saying here is that if we sort of look at the kernel uh, of this map of complexes, uh, it's this complex that's sort of controlling the deformation theory. Okay, and so, um, what I'd like to say in general is that the deformation theory of my perfect complex should be given by some kind of higher Picard stack or category. And that's, that's sort of why this uh, complex um, appears. So, so let me say, so what are these? These are both hints. I guess what I'm writing here, hints. Um, for higher category theory. So first uh, in sort of part A, Here's something I could sort of really silly I could do. Start with my K, put it into an injective object, let's call it J, take an injective uh, comp, uh, sheaf, and okay, that might not be, uh, that still might not kill all cohomology, but if I make it a complex, let me put the identity here, here's J, and then call this complex I, now I have a acyclic complex. This will kill all cohomology, okay? Uh, and this is, looks really silly, but the point is that if you go over here to this O tilde, if I was allowed to make my I a complex rather than just a sheaf, uh, then this strategy would actually work. And that's actually how we're gonna do it, 
Okay, but so the technical thing we need to do is allow this I over here uh, to not just be a, a sheaf, but a complex. Okay, and now what kind of object will O tilde be? It'll be some kind of simplicial ring or something like that. Okay, uh, but that's sort of the very, the, the translation of the very naive idea. Okay, um, and the second point is, uh, I really want to make sense of what kind of object, let me use the notation of SGA4, sort of the stack associated to uh, sort of this Arham E E tensor K. Okay, so. Um, can you say what, what does that mean? The CH obviously must be, must be shot. Yeah, so, the, so, that, so that's the what, notation. What is that? So what that's that a notation mean? in SGA4. So let me, I can say that briefly. Um, and, and this is a, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say that in a precise way. So uh, that was just sort of motivation. But in general, if you have a two term complex of sheaves or something, uh, you can make an associated uh, first uh, pre stack, which is you take objects. Um, will be sort of sections of L0 and morphisms. So um, similar to it, what's done, I guess, you know, it's, it, it's in SGA4, it's also in Baron Fenteki, I think. Uh, you take, you know, if I want to say what is the morphism from X to X prime, it's a um, Y in L minus one uh, such that dy equals, and I don't remember which sign I should put there, but uh, let's do it that way. Okay. And so then, and then you can sort of stackify and you get uh, this thing that's denoted the stack. Okay. And so what I, I guess my point is I would really like to see the deformation problem as arising from sort of bringing all together, all the, you know, not just the obstructions and the isomorphism classes of deformations and the automorphisms, but really understand how the complex Arham E, E tensor K sort of controls the whole story. Um, okay. Does that uh, help? Yeah. All right. Okay, any questions about this so far? Any more questions? There, yeah, in this case, there's lots of interesting discussion going on, but kind of more, more uh, like it's around what you're saying. So, okay, uh, everyone is happy. Okay, well, good. Everyone's enjoying it. As happy as they're going to be, I guess. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, so now, I, now I'll make everyone unhappy. Uh, okay. Uh, infinity category of perfect. Um, complexes. Okay, and, and you have to all appreciate that it's a real step up for me to even write such things. <laughs> um, it's not something I'm super comfortable with. So, uh, you know, again, I'll give my take on it. And I'm very happy to have experts jump in, but uh, hopefully it gives encouragement also for people to learn new things. <laughs> okay, so um, let me do the setup again. So we're on our site. Um, and let's take, we have our O, which I guess I should probably, there's one additional step up, which would be to let O be non-commutative, but let me just make O, O will be a commutative ring. So I'm willing to do that. Um, okay. And then I want to consider B will be a strictly commutative uh, differential graded algebra. Um, and let me put a reference for you here so I don't write the definition. Stacks project tag uh, 061B. Okay, so if you want to just remind yourself, you can just look it up while I'm talking uh, on the side. 
Okay, and then uh, so I have this differential graded algebra. So it's a complex with also a multiplicative structure with the sign convention that occurs in the Durham complex. Okay, I think that's, that's how to remember it. Okay, and then you have um, a category of modules over such a thing. Uh, so I'll write mod B DG. This is differential graded B modules. And here uh, you can uh, also find the precise definition, tag zero nine J I. Okay, so there's your, uh, if you wanna look that up. All right, okay, and I view this as a model category, uh, and this again, I don't wanna to say too much about this, uh, unless people really want me to, uh, with the flat model category structure, model. There's a, it, it, that's the sort of model. If you know about model categories, we need to, we want to take tensor product because we take a, want to take a complex over one ring and tensor it up to another ring. And for that to be a good procedure, we, we need some kind of behavior with respect to flatness. Okay, and now here's sort of the object, a curly D, C, B. Right, so what is an infinity category? Uh, it's a simplicial set of some sort. Um, and if you look in Lurie's book, um, well, you can glead this and I'll, so there's something like the nerve of a category, except there's sort of a fancy or a better version called the DG nerve. Um, and then you take the category over here. Okay. Uh, like this. Um, okay. And so what is this? Uh, this is means that you take just the cofibrant, uh, the circle there means fibrant object. So it means something like uh, we just work with, uh, I don't know, let's say injective objects, injective complexes or something like this. So you, you, you don't take all complexes, but let's, that's not a major point. And this is, uh, this is this thing called the DG nerve, which, uh, you can look up, it's a very sort of, I mean, it's all the details are there. High, Lurie's higher algebra, I think it's 1.3.1.6. So I'm not sure how nervous, I, I'm preferring to not be nervous about these references that the definitions are when you see them reasonable given what you want them to be or, uh, but I do get nervous a little bit by whether there's some hidden zero hardcore technicalities. I, I'm a little nervous too. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, I guess the point is, uh, so I, I'll just tell you my experience, which was that there are these massive volumes, uh, but they're actually ex extremely well written. And like, it's like real, you know, you can actually go through it and sort of read it. And, and so that was why I sort of really needed a problem that would actually force me to do it. Um, but, but maybe when I, what I say in a moment might help, uh, you know, but, but I would say these references, you're right, like you don't want to just, it, it's not, so, at least for me, it was not something I could sort of sit down and just say, I'm just going to learn this. Some people can do that. Uh, but, you know, now I had a problem. And so uh, then all of the stuff is there and one can sort of go through it. So um, I guess the one thing I would say is, uh, for me, it's a little easier to think about differential graded algebras and modules over them. That has a certain, you know, that's just an easier feel to it. And so this differential graded nerve is a way to go between those two uh, approaches. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, uh, yeah. So, sorry, it's between differential graded algebras, uh, which presumably simply commutative is something <clears throat> fairly a, a reasonable adjective to add, but it's between two things. So you said the differential graded nerve is. Between... I mean, so if you have a, so if you want to go from differential graded category, like this modules, differential graded modules, over a differential graded algebra, like that's something I feel like I can understand. Um, you know, complexes, actions of under differential graded algebra, and now you want to turn it into one of these objects in Lurie's theory, right? The way you do it is you take, uh, you do this differential graded nerve construction, right? So if you have an ordinary category, you can also take its nerve 
uh, which is a simplicial set, right? And that's sort of the way to think about categories and, and uh, simplicial sets. And, and so this is some kind of slightly souped up version that uh, is sort of, is, is a little more useful. I think it's equivalent to just taking the nerve. I hope that's right. Okay, so let me um, also say, so inside here we have this, we can talk about perfect complexes. Again, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Um, that's sort of what we're really interested in. Um, the point is, this is just a property of the isomorphism class of an object. So uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just, well, that's what it is. So it's not, it's, it doesn't require fancy, fancy things to say what it is. Um, okay, so we have that. Um, and I would also say that if you... Can you say something about the flat model category structure? Is there a reference for that, for example? Or? Uh, yes, uh, you can look in Liu and uh, Sheng uh, on the six operations for elliptic sheaves on stacks, I think. There's a, a paper uh, where that is discussed there. I mean, it, it goes back to Gillespie, Probably Mark Hovey also was involved, um, but uh, it's discussed in the generality here that I'm using uh, there. Um, okay, and the last thing I wanted to mention is that if you have a simplicial ring, and this is where uh, um, sort of, there are better ways to do this, but this is the way I understand it, um, is I can sort of cheat and just think about modules um, sort of over the simplicial ring, I can just take the, so in general, you have to be careful about uh, the, dull, the, the normalization. There's sort of this correspondence between simplicial abelian groups uh, and um, complexes, which in mixed characteristic or not characteristic zero does not behave well with respect to uh, um, algebra structures, but one direction is okay. So you can take a simplicial ring and take its normalization, and that's a perfectly good differential graded algebra. And so I'll just take this as my definition. Okay. All right, so now um, let me, but, but uh, you know, you can't go the other way in general. All right, so, um, what else? So now let me talk about deformations. Okay, so um, I'll have a surjective map now, B dot to C dot. And I realized as I just before I logged in and it was too late to change my talk and I'll just confuse myself. I'll try to put a C dot when I mean a ring and it's just my site should really be in some bold font. So I apologize. My site is also called C. Uh, oh, well, it, I think it's too late to change. Um, okay, and let's... I forgot that your site was called C, so... Oh, okay, so I, I, I shouldn't have said it at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, and so I want a surjection map uh, of DGAs and I'll again, sort of just my usual setup, but now I'll have a kernel and uh, I squared uh, will be zero. Okay, so kind of the same setup. Um, and I'll also have an object here, E, uh, which will be a module, um, a dif differential graded module over there. So in my situation, C will actually just be an ordinary ring, but then the, 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 the ring I want to consider is what I was calling O tilde earlier, which was some sort of, uh, uh, you know, DG thing. Uh, so, so my this starting setup here, C will usually just be a ring, but I can do it like this. Okay, and so now I can do what I kind of wanted to do for the Picard, uh, uh, the rank one case, um, except now let me just think about this here. Um, um, there's, this is tensor product um, over B. 
oops, uh, yes, E to C, tensor down, right? And then I can think about uh, trying to calculate the fiber product, right? And so this is kind of the odd, what is this? This is the fiber sort of homotopy fiber product is what we'll be interested in. What is that? That is sort of the category of deformations of E, right? And so that is in some sense what we're trying to understand, um, right? And so let me uh, state a little theorem. And uh, I mean, this is, will be in the paper uh, but um, it's also an excellent exercise, I think, for people who have not worked with differential graded algebras before. Um, so let's suppose um, that there exists a lifting. Uh, of E, oops, sorry, E to, um, B. Okay, meaning an object or a B, a module over B, which tensors down to my given E. Uh, then, let me call this star. If you take the fiber product here, uh, is given by, I mean, is isomorphic in a natural way. Okay, so let me write it this way. So you take R hom E, E, tensor I. Um, you have to shift it by one and you have to truncate the thing you get, tau less than or equal to zero. So that now creates a complex sitting in degree zero and below. And then, so this, so if you write this down, so what is it? This is a complex, yeah, so it's what I just said. It's a complex sitting in degree of abelian group, say sitting in degree zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, okay? And then if you can do, there's a way to turn such a complex into a simplicial set, that's called the dold Khan correspondence. So this is uh, dold Khan. Okay, and so that calculates uh, the fiber product. So you, that's a truncation there? Or is that, uh, that's a, top? yeah, let, let me try to write it better. Um, let's see, tau less than or equal to zero. Okay, so if you so if you think about this complex, what does it do? In degree zero, it has x one. In degree minus one, it has x zero, and so on, and x minus two, and so on. Um, okay, so this goes up to x minus one. Should I be surprised that you have to trunc that the truncation is there? That that, that I mean, that seems like a blunt. Well, the reason well the reason is because we're talking about simplicial sets. Right, so, so if you think about this dold Khan correspondence, it translates things in degree zero and below into simplicial sets. And so it's kind of, I guess, so now someone please correct me, but I think it's akin to the, this, what people call connective spectra versus all spectra. So if you think about spaces or, or spectra, uh, you could worry about whether you have homotopy groups in negative degrees or not. Right. So someone, and, really, someone, someone fancy would get rid of that and say this is in fact a fiber product in some infinite. Blah, blah, blah. So, so probably if you do it in a fancier way, you could get rid of that. Yeah. Now you'll, you'll, but you'll notice I also am allowed to translate, shift my eye. My eye doesn't have to sit in degree zero anymore. So if I shift it properly, uh, that will also take care of that. Um, um, okay, so, um, right. Um, let's see, so, so that's kind of the theorem. And so now, uh, let's see, I have about 10 minutes, I think. Now you can kind of guess sort of what the story should be. So um, I think I will, 
I had, you know, so part of this is what is the definition of the determinant? Um, and uh, it's a very complicated story involving K theory. And actually in the paper, I think there's sort of four different constructions of K theory that enter in. So it's, it's a bit of a mess, but let, let me give the very short version and then draw a picture. Um, so I obviously don't have time to go through all of that. Okay, but uh, let me at least say, uh, so what can we say about the determinant? All right. Um, yeah, so let me see, well, let me draw, maybe I'll start with the picture. Um, so I'm interested in, let, let me do, let me do the case when C is a point. So let's forget about the topology for the moment. That will, so there's sort of a sheafification aspect that will enter in and we have a simplicial ring. Okay, so what should the determinant uh, be? Well, I'll put it here. So I want this category of perfect uh, sort of objects over a dot, perfect modules over this a dot. Um, and I would like to have, and let me draw a big arrow because I'll fill in the rest like that. I would like it to go to some category which I'll write pick Z of A dot. And what I want here is that if um, A is just a ring, not a simplicial ring, but just an ordinary ring, this is, um, this is, uh, uh, this is the category, uh, this is pairs. n l where uh, n is an integer and uh, l is a rank one module okay and there's some um so this is a monoidal category where you have tensor product and the one of the key points in the theory is there's a sign commutativity constraint that one has to put in but let me not dwell on that right now okay um, since I'm short on time but so 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 think of what we want for the determinant it, it's a uh, oh and here I should put isomorphism classes it's not functorial for all morphisms just uh, isomorphisms okay so I want to have some uh, map like this Okay, and it seems very hard to imagine how to do that in the traditional approaches of Knudsen and Mumford, uh, right? You, what you do is you sort of locally present your complex using res, you know, a, a resolution, and then you take alternating sum of the highest exterior powers of the terms, and then you have to work really hard uh, to glue it all together, right? And now we're in the setting of sort of a general site, a simplicial ring, it seems impossible. Um, and I think for me, at least, it is impossible that way. So let me explain how you get around that. Um, so let me, I guess what I have to do over here is do just introduce a bit of notation. Um, sorry, there's a notifications popping up from the waiting room. Um, okay, so let's take, so if I have this simplicial ring here, I can take n by n matrices over it, and then I can map down to, uh, so, so I'm gonna do a construction, which you can find, for example, in Weibel's book, I think. I'm sure it goes, you know, again, I'm sure it goes back to Quillen, others. Um, so pi naught of my simplicial ring is an ordinary ring, uh, so this, diagram might make sense. And then there's sort of this GLN a, hot, a dot is defined to be the fiber product. So it's a monoid. It's what's called group-like, meaning that if you go to sort of the pi naught, then you have um, 
a group, but sort of it's only a group up to sort of higher homotopies. Okay, but it's a monoid. Um, and what you can do then up here is you can take the coproduct of n bigger than or equal to zero, b g l n of a dot. Okay, and now if you sort of think about it for a while, um, this is also a monoid. And um, there's a natural map here, which is given by thinking about free modules of rank n. <laughs> Okay, so a free module of rank n, like let's think about the case of a ring, GLN of R, that acts on a free module of rank n. And so that's sort of sitting, so that means that the automorphism group, you can put GLN R and then map that to the free module. And now um, here, there's sort of a natural way to define the determinant, just directly from the determinant on GLN. <laughs> Right? It's a completely uh, sort of a free module. I know exactly what to do. Now, how do you get the determinant map in general from that? Well, the point is that um, this is some kind of monoid and you can take its K theory, uh, which has some universal property. It's a sort of universal map to a group like um, um, I guess the terminology is group like infinity monoid. Um, and so that's, this is some version of Quillen's plus construction. Um, and then, so this map, so you get this map here just for, uh, by the universal property. And then now this gets more complicated, but there are some very sort of fancy modern versions of associating uh, a certain K theory of a, certain stable infinity categories, which is what we're looking at here. So there's such a thing. And then again, by the universal property, you get a map there. And then one has to prove, and this is also done if you dig around the literature, that this induces an isomorphism at least after, so let me put it in quotes, maybe after suitable uh, so-called Zariski sheafification, okay? And so now maybe I should have erased this. So if I wanna define the determinant, so, so I've lost track. You said isomorphism, but those objects were, uh, that object, was that the group-like, that was the group-like infinity? The, what, what, Which one? This one here? Oops. The, things you have isomorph the things that you have an isomorph, quote, isomorphism between. Yeah, uh, so, okay. so the th yeah, so the thing is that there are all these versions of K-theory. Uh, and so one is, you know, you start with uh, sort of a, a, an, I guess an E infinity monoid, and then you take its group completion. That has a nice sort of universal property. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. Uh, then there's other fancier things that starts with certain stable infinity categories and produces something. Um, again, it, in, it induces one of these group-like, I mean, it, it's, it's, I guess the, it's a theorem that this is, you can also think of this as connective spectra, spectra with no pi, negative pi i, okay? Um, and so you get this map here, um, and so that this is, an, it's nearly an isomorphism. There's some business about Zariski sheafification, which I'm gonna gloss over unless you insist. Uh, but, but think of this as being an isomorphism, which can be really made precise. And then, so once you have this, you see, then you get the determinant map, right? Because you start here, and now maybe I should use a different color. Um, I don't know, I think this maybe is red. I'm colorblind, so this is not such a good thing to do maybe. Um, right, that's my determinant. Okay, so it's, it's very hard to see sort of, well, anyway, that, that's the definition. <laughs> okay, so now let me draw a picture. Um, I think I'm nearly out of time. So let me just finish with a picture and then I'm certainly happy to keep talking uh, if people want me to, uh, but I don't know, it's not good style to go too far over. Um, actually, let me uh, clear this page and just draw a big picture. Um, so how's the story gonna go? So um, let me just write it rather quickly and I apologize for going over O prime to O 
we have our K, um, we have our E, and then um, I'm going to choose my injection K into J, embedded into an injective uh, module, and then let me put uh, sort of I dot will be the simplicial thing I get by taking the dolt con of the identity map J to J. Okay, and so uh, then I get this O tilde. Uh, o tilde is the push out. And then um, we also call I bar to be the quotient I mod K. All right, so now let me draw the picture. So um, we have D perf. Um, it's all happening over my site uh, C. So I have D perf O. Then I have D perf O tilde. Let me erase this thing that I put in. Um, and I'm going to only think about up to isomorphism. Then here I have base change D perf um, O bracket I bar. And then I have, uh, let me just put this on the last one. If you don't mind, I'll just write uh, the fiber, which is, let me write it somewhat sloppily. I hope the Natal lesson are equal to zero. The harm E, E, and I'll note that I bar is isomorphic to K with a shift of one. So you can write the fiber here as K shifted by two. Okay, now I have determinants. So I can take determinant. goes to pick Z O tilde. Then here I have pick Z O bracket I bar. Oops, stylus is misbehaving. Okay, so we have that. And then here we have sort of global cohomology. That's the fiber of K shifted by two. Okay, that didn't draw. K. Okay. okay. Okay, so we have that. Here's determinant. And I have the one on the left too, which is pick. Z, O. Okay, here's determinant. Okay, so here's sort of what you have to do. So I'd like to prove the formula, the first formula that the trace of omega E is equal to omega of the determinant of E. Okay, so let's ex explain how that follows from this diagram. So the first point is that these maps are equivalences. Okay, that requires proof, but it maybe shouldn't be so, so surprising because, uh, you know, what is the kernel of the map from O tilde to O? It's an acyclic complex of injectives. <laughs> so we haven't done a whole lot to that ring. Okay, so that's the first point. Uh, the second point is, if you think about this picture, there's an induced map on the fiber, right, uh, that comes here. Um, and so the question is, you know, the basic question is what is the map that the determinant induces on the tangent space? And the answer is this is the trace, okay? And this is sort of the heart of the matter. So the map you get from the determinant when you say it takes, so the, I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fancy version of the statement that uh, the derivative of the determinant is the trace, right? And that's this map. 
Okay, and so you see now, so how do we get the abstraction uh, to deforming our complex uh, E? Um, we start here, because this is an equivalence, uh, it lifts to an E tilde here, which then goes to an E bar here. Oops. And um, then you think about it, if you push it out further, it goes to the trivial lifting so that it actually gives you a class sort of in here, class, um, which is the thing so that when you go under the boundary map, you get the obstruction to deforming E, right? That was sort of in my naive setup where I sort of assumed that various cohomology groups vanish, that, that was sort of the idea, right? So this gives me the class, the, cl the class here of this E bar is the obstruction, okay? And so then the commutativity of this diagram just tells you that, okay, you go to the bottom row, you do the same thing for the determinant, that gives you a class here and the commutativity of this is this formula. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. I'm way over time, so I'm gonna stop here, uh, but I'm happy to stick around and talk more. Thank you.